Friends, it has been a wild month in the metaverse. From a real home being sold via NFT, to Snoop Dogg and everything he's doing there, and a severe data breach that we need to talk about, there is so much to cover about what's been happening in this new digital world. So strap in because there are a lot of things coming your way that we need to know about. My name is Trent Kennelly. I'm a marketing strategist, and on this channel, I talk about all the things that you can do to improve your business through marketing, sales, analytics, and the metaverse. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're into it. Let me know the coolest thing that you've learned about the metaverse this week or this month. I would love to talk to you about it. It just gets me excited. And let's get started. So first let's talk about OpenSea's data breach. So OpenSea, if you don't know, is an NFT marketplace. It's actually the premier NFT marketplace where people go to buy and sell NFTs. And it's a really, really big platform to have a data breach impact them. So it looks like around 254 tokens were stolen from between 17 and 32 different users, which has resulted in around 1.7 to $2 million of loss for the platform and those users who are affected. But what's really odd here is that the CEO, in their own interests, are saying that no, 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 this was not a data breach, that this was actually a phishing attack. But many people on the outside who are analyzing the situation are disputing that and saying that it was an exploit of OpenSea. Regardless, what we're looking at here is a first big attack on one of these NFT marketplaces, and it could shake the foundation of NFT marketplaces or not. We're gonna have to see what happens. Maybe people will decide they don't trust OpenSea. Maybe they'll decide they don't trust NFT marketplaces generally. Or maybe they'll just decide that they wanna go over to start on their own website because it's easier and there's less stress about hacks and that sort of stuff. So we're gonna have to see what happens. This could happen or not. This is a really interesting and important development in the NFT world. Next, let's talk about Snoop Dogg. So Snoop Dogg recently bought Death Row Records, which you might have heard about. But what's really big here is that he's publicly declared that he is gonna be the first NFT metaverse label. So this is gonna be revolutionary for the music industry. And along with that, he sold his record back on death row as the BODR stash box NFT. Now, when you buy this, you get one of the songs from back on death row in the stash box. So there are currently a limit of 25,000 total in the NFT collection. And he sold 2,300 as of the making of this video for around $5,000 a pop. So this is really important because if we want buy-in from the general public, if we want more people who don't understand this technology or haven't shown interest yet, this is exactly what we need. We need celebrities to show interest and to talk about this more often because that will naturally drive more people into the space. Next, a home in Tampa, Florida was recently sold for $654,000 as an NFT. Though, to be a bit clearer, calling the home itself an NFT is a bit of a misnomer because this is is really important. According to US law right now, when you buy NFTs, you don't have true ownership stake in that art or land or whatever it is. You own a license to that NFT. True ownership isn't really possible for NFTs at this moment via blockchain sales, which is obviously a bit complicated when it comes to selling a home as an NFT. But according to Proppy, who settled the transaction, what was actually sold via NFT were the legal documents signifying ownership. So that could be better, but there still seem to be some questions here about what effect the sale of an NFT containing the documents will have on the legal status of the home. It's always a little bit tricky to manage real estate in these new ways. So this one is probably not settled. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's gonna be something that's gonna be litigated. They're gonna to go to court over this. And then we're gonna have a real understanding of what NFTs look like for a real estate purchase. Next, we're seeing some big companies that are diving into these metaverse spaces now, which is really exciting. So for instance, Disney has started to hire NFT experts for something. We don't know what that looks like right now. The only information we have is that they have some positions posted on their jobs website looking to hire NFT experts. But this is really significant because it shows interest in the metaverse space and in the NFT space by those big companies, which is something I'm always talking about and something that is so important. And especially when you consider, in this case, an entertainment giant like Disney getting involved, there's a much larger possibility of the metaverse and NFTs sticking around for a long time because they bring with them all of these franchises that people absolutely love, like Marvel or Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or whatever. 
L'Oreal has also started moving into metaverse spaces and this month they filed 17 NFT and digital trademarks. They say that they're intending to let customers view, collect, buy, sell, and trade virtual beauty products. So it doesn't sound like it's translating into anything like physical product or e-commerce just yet. But once we can get a strong mechanism in place like the one with Boson Protocol, it's going to make it a lot easier to make those sales happen and it's going to get a lot more exciting for these e-retailers. And finally, YouTube is hinting at adding NFT features to their platform as well. So YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki wrote in a letter that we're always focused on expanding the YouTube ecosystem to help creators capitalize on emerging technologies, including things like NFTs, while continuing to strengthen and enhance the experiences creators and fans have on YouTube. And this definitely lines up with the direction of other social media platforms and the way that they have gone when you consider things like Twitter allowing people to show off their NFTs in a special profile picture, etc. It's really not clear exactly what direction YouTube is planning to take in this space just yet, so we'll need to wait and see. But again, legitimacy, legitimacy, legitimacy. All right, let's jump into the state of the metaverse. We're going to start with Meta once again, because Meta's huge gamble for the metaverse has so far not paid off for them at all. In fact, there are reports that since the launch, Meta has lost around $500 billion. That's $500 billion since October 2021, or about five months ago from when I made this video, which is roughly the GDP of all of Ireland in 2021 that they lost in five months, or enough to send 312 of NASA's next generation rockets to the moon. Though this waterfall, which is crazy fast, started from the first ever reported quarterly loss of $10 billion by Facebook slash Meta, which then triggered a $230 billion drop in their market cap, which then dropped them out of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world. Now, they've argued that this is in large part due to the data restrictions brought on by the Google and Apple policy changes. You can check out this video for more details on those. And I'm not saying that that's not part of it. It definitely has something to do with it. But it wouldn't be fair to ignore the impact of Zuckerberg's metaverse dreams here. Because the VR division, which is where all of this metaverse stuff is being developed, reportedly loses money on every single Oculus Quest 2 sale. And in fact, we're even seeing reports that in Q4 of last year, of the $3.3 billion of loss that they incurred in the VR division alone, only $877 million in revenue was earned in that same period. So that is a huge amount of loss. Now, yes, of course, the metaverse is a long-term play for meta, but even the richest companies in the world can't sustain a burn rate of half a trillion dollars every five months for very long. It's just not gonna work out for them in the long run. So if meta can't find their way out of this tailspin very soon, they're gonna find their metaverse squashed and others that have the user's trust and that aren't burning money faster than 312 rockets flying their way to the moon are going to take over and they're going to take that top place. But okay, 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 there's at least one good piece of meta news this week. Meta's developing a technology that's going to allow you to build virtual worlds by just describing them. So you can say something like, let's go to the beach and have the AI generate a beach scene. Then you can customize the scene to look how you want. And in the demo by Mark Zuckerberg, he even got pretty detailed in his descriptions asking at one point for alto cumulus clouds and having those specific clouds generated by the AI. If this technology can be fine tuned, it's going to make the development of virtual spaces way more accessible for everyday users and not just those users who understand how to sketch and build 3D virtual objects. Next, let's talk about Decentraland. So Decentraland has a real estate office that's recently opened that's going to make it possible to see properties, physical properties in their physical space in 3D before they're built in real life so you can walk through these design spaces before they've actually been built on a real property. So this is from a Spanish real estate company called Metro Vaquesa, which teamed up with Data Casas PropTech, which is a startup that's focused on real estate sales through digital spaces. Now it's currently only possible to view these homes on an appointment basis, so you have to schedule an appointment and walk through them with the person, but people have reported that this is like walking through a 3D version of a real property. So that's really, really cool. Now they've made this investment to analyze whether there's a potential for new markets inside metaverses. So they're only putting the money in to figure this out right now. Nobody is actually committed to it. And if this works, this would be huge because the real estate market is generally pretty unchanging. There's not a lot of variety there. And a new market like this would really drive a lot of people onto the platform to dive deep.
deeper into metaverses more generally. So this could be a huge bit of news for Decentraland. Next, let's talk about Microsoft. So Microsoft purchased Activision Blizzard this month for $68.7 billion, which led a lot of people to declare that this gaming company purchase was a big bet on the metaverse by Microsoft. But as far as can be determined, neither Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella nor anyone else at Microsoft has even hinted that this has anything to do with the metaverse. Now, yes, Microsoft does have the HoloLens, which is its AR device, but let's not forget that they also have the Xbox One, which is one of the biggest gaming consoles in the world. So if Microsoft hasn't said anything about this being a metaverse play, and they already have a huge gaming presence, there's almost no reason to think that this is a metaverse bet. Which might leave you asking why I even brought it up. Well, because the confusion here leads to a core question of the metaverse and honestly a core irritation for me. Is the metaverse all about games? Because the people who claim that this is a play for the metaverse are implying that that's all it's good for. When in fact you and I know that there is so much more potential than playing games inside virtual spaces. So what this signifies is that we need to work harder to get people to understand why the metaverse matters and how it can help businesses and society in the near term. And then finally, let's talk about the sandbox. So we are back to Snoop here on the sandbox because Snoop has just dropped 10,000 playable avatars as NFTs for Alpha Season 2 of the sandbox. And these avatars, they are of Snoop. You can run around looking like Snoop. And to me, this is as big a move as his move into the metaverse with Death Row Records because it shows how completely invested he is in this space. And as I mentioned before, the excitement here is gonna feed the excitement of other big influencers, which is gonna lend the metaverse more legitimacy, which is gonna drive more people into the metaverse and getting interested in it because we have all of these big influencers who are showing interest as well. So there's all the news you need to know for the metaverse this month. I would love to know what your favorite news story was. Mine is definitely all the Snoop news because it is just showing this huge legitimacy and interest by this really big name which is gonna, again, drive those other big names and get everybody excited. This is what's gonna drive the legitimacy. This is what we need. Big companies, big influencers. So I'd love to know what you think about it as well. Make sure that you give me a like, subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I will catch you in the comments or in the next one.